So now it's uh, 9.00 and we will start the webinar. So warm welcome to everyone there behind your screens. We are very happy to know that there are so many of you there following this webinar. It gives an indication of the importance of the team that we are talking about today. And the webinar is a kickoff webinar of the eFlow Hub, which is um, an, the electric excellence network of actors in Southwest Finland and also on national level, then further on. My name is Linda Frebanjemi and I come from Turku Science Park. And we are arranging this webinar together with uh, our colleagues Jouko and Johanna from Yritissalo, and then I have Raimo Wuopion Pera here, who is my colleague from Turku Science Park. Battery issue is very important on EU level and in Finland. Electrification in society and industry is part of Euro's economic strategy and low carbon target. The aim is to build up battery technology and production capacity in the EU. Finland wants to be and to have a strong role as part of Europe's battery ecosystem. We have an impressive expertise throughout the battery value chain, which we are bringing with us. And in Southwest Finland, together with Salo, Turku and Pori, we wanted to screen the actors here in the region and bring them together for co-creation to find innovative solutions to electrification. And uh, as a result of this, uh, we have the project, a two-year project where we are working together to, to find, to develop actions and uh, services to companies and to build up a network uh, and to so support the national network batteries from Finland with our regional network so that we can be strong together on national le level. And from this, I will bring, give the word to my peer Jouko from Yritissalo. I will end the slideshow here. And Jouko is the moderator of the keynote session that will start now. Please, Jouko. Okay, thank you, Linda. And very good morning to everybody on, on the webinar to this morning. Uh, we are having some uh, practical issues here, here uh, first. And uh, the first one is that uh, after every keynote there is a time for questions and answers but please because of the uh, we are so so many at the lines at the moment use the questions uh, the the chat box box for that and we'll uh, follow with the answers after every every keynote keynote uh, as linda mentioned we are running together this uh, this uh, pr program or project here in uh, in the southwest Finland Finland and uh, this is the kick uh, kickoff seminar for or webinar for this uh, this project. Uh, first um, keynote speaker I would like to introduce is Mr. Jyrki Alkio from the Ministry of Economic Affairs and Employment. Mr. Jyrki Alkio is working as a chief specialist at the Ministry of Economic Affairs and Employment of Finland. He is leading the circular, circular economy and carbon neutrality team in the ministry. He was also the vice chairman of the group developing the Finnish national battery strategy in 2020. Uh, Mr. Jyrki Alkio has background in journalism. He has been working for the leading Finnish news publications, last as the editor-in-chief of the magazine Technica and Talous. Uh, Jyrki, please, the stage is yours. Thank you, Joko, very much. First, I just want to make sure that uh, I can be heard and then that uh, I, I'm able to share my screen. So, can you hear me? All good. 
yeah and the slides are running excellent yeah just a second um first of all thanks for the opportunity to 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 have the the possibility to to present our battery strategy um i was in um, a kickoff event in Salo, I think it was in June 2019, and there was a full house of people uh, listening the the presentations related to, to batteries and the Finnish battery ecosystem at that time. And I recall that the mayor of Salo also mentioned in the event that Salo wants to become the uh, the battery capital of Finland. So. This is a new kickoff event right now, so I'm I'm eagerly waiting what will be the outcome of this kickoff event today. But um, as Joko said, so my name is Jyrki Alki and I work for the ministry and I have been involved in the in the battery strategy work with a colleague of mine, Jarko Vesa, who, ho who hopefully is also attending the event today. But um, so I will start with the background of, of the work and then take a look at the goals and also the actions that we, we suggested in the strategy work. So the whole thing, the project started in June last year when the Ministry of Economic Affairs, Mika, Mr. Mika Lintila, uh, asked a group to, to prepare the strategy. So the work was very intensive, so it only lasted something like six, six months and we came up, came, came up with the strategy at the end of last year as, as, as uh, asked and as proposed. So I think the work was very, very intensive and uh, uh, very focused and I, I'm very happy with the, with the outcome of the work. And uh, when we started the work, the goals of the strategy project f was first to, to strengthen the Finland's role in, in sustainable battery manufacturing and also in recycling. I think the key words here are sustainability and, and recycling because that, that they are considered as like competitive edges for Finland. And related to them, the goals are to minimize carbon footprint and then also to maximize the carbon handprint. And what we mean with handprint is that uh, uh, the combustion engines in the transportation currently are are producing a lot of CO2 emissions and if we are able to replace those carbon engines with EVs so the CO2 emissions will reduce remarkably so so that is the handprint effect of, of batteries and of course we want to strengthen the national battery ecosystem and then we want to have a like a wider uh, impact also that we want to build a sustainable low carbon economy in Finland and, and see the future growth potential in this kind of development. And this uh, renewal of industries is based on innovations and we see that they also provide a big pro growth, growth potential for the, for the society. And in, that is, in addition to make the businesses boom, uh, they are also the source for new new jobs. And then I collected some of the starting points and lessons learned during the process. So the goal of the strategy is to to develop uh, like a new industrial policy or to develop a new industry that is enhancing climate goals. So currently the uh, footprint of the battery industry is remarkable, but uh, also the potential, the business potential in this industry, industry is just so huge. And the idea is that in Finland we have we are, we are very nicely positioned in this in this business because we are able to produce batteries and battery materials with very or rather small footprint. And I think we did the strategy the right way. We started with the vision, we made SWOT analysis, we identified must-win battles, and then we came out with recommendations for policy actions and uh, policy goals and policy actions. And what we learned during the process, I think the maybe the most important thing was that it's not question only about batteries 
uh, the challenge and the opportunity is much, much bigger. It's about electrification of societies in general. We are talking right now so much about the EVs and the transportation, but the same process is going on in, in many other fields of the, of the society as well. And in Finland, for example, the heavy duty vehicles is seen as a very promising, promising area. So in the strategy work, we are not talking only about batteries, but batteries and electrification. And when we started the work, we identified eight key themes and then we organized the work of the of the strategy group uh, along these themes and we had eight, eight subgroups. One was focusing on circular economy, other one on active materials, precursors and battery cells, third on battery systems and applications, and the fourth one on raw materials, both uh, primary and secondary. And then we had some vertical themes. Uh, one was related to competencies, another one on reg regulation, third on EU cooperation, and the fourth one on sustainability and uh, low carbon and responsible production. Uh, we had all together 15 members in the strategy group that develop in the group that developed the strategy and the background of the of the people involved they came from the industry they came from academia and then from ministries so we had people uh, coming from Finnish minerals group that is Suomen Malmialostus from Metso Autotech from Sandvik from Valmet Automotive and then from ministries, uh, Ministry of Economic Affairs, of course, but then Ministry of Transport and Communication, uh, Ministry of uh, uh, Environment and Ministry of Finance. And the universities, it was LUT, it was Aalto, it was Oulo, and then also the organizations working uh, under Ministry of Economic Affairs, GTK, VTT and Business Finland were involved. And CEO of GTK, Mika Nykänen, was the chairman of the group. Uh, so the strategy was launched at the end of January, and we had a press conference on January 26th, uh, which was very successful and we got very positive media coverage after the after the press conference and I think the uh, strategy was seen in media widely as a very promising approach to 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 the topic and two days later we had a webinar for national and inter international stakeholders we had a very high level program we had the vice president Maros Sefkovic from EU, Mr. Batteries of EU having a keynote among others. Unfortunately, uh, we had very big technical difficulties, so, so the webinar did not work as, as prepared. But if you want to see uh, like a recorded or edited version of the of the speeches or, and the webinar, you still can visit the website Batteries from Finland. And I think there, for example, Mr. Sefkovic had very nice words regarding the Finnish battery ecosystem and also the strategy we have developed. But then to the strategy. Um, the, I think we could summarize the vision in the in the words at the below or at the, at the like lower end of the of the slide. So the key words here are low carbon future and it's about climate, it's about circularity, it's about our competencies, it's about innovations and it's about growth. And then when we are looking at the focus areas of, of, the, of, of our national strategy, we started from the maybe existing strengths and, and then it's pretty much so far, our work has started from battery materials. Uh, we have the strong mining industry, industry that is providing minerals also for batteries. And then we are advancing in the field of battery materials. There are investments going on in Finland and we are uh, the production of battery materials is, is starting pretty soon or oh, it's it's already over there but it's it's growing 
So we identify big potential in this field. And we also have technologies for batteries and battery production for the existing technologies. But if we have strong focus on research and competencies, hopefully we are able to to be become a like, key player in developing the next generation solutions, technologies and, and chemistries. And then if we look, if we move to the application side, as mentioned already, we have identified maybe a little bit niche market, but nevertheless a remarkable market in the field of heavy duty vehicles. We have good competencies in this field. We have companies that have uh, a good understanding and that and are very remarkable remarkable players in this field and they are taking a very like the future oriented approach in their work and then we have the wider transportation sector that is a big a huge market it's not only related to roads it's also in uh, development same kind of development is going on in in marine sector in harbors almost well not maybe in everywhere but in many fields of, of of the society and then the sixth focus area is recycling technologies and solutions where we have put a lot of uh, emphasis on on research and also activities in the industry already going on and then in the core focus is sustainability sustainable and responsible business and production uh, this slide shows the value chain as we see it here in Finland. This is a slide provided by Business Finland maybe a couple of years ago, but I think it still illustrates pretty, pretty nicely what is the big picture. And uh, then I think the Finland is, is approaching and Finland is coming to this value chain from two different angles. We come from the raw material side and are, are, are then moving to chemicals and components and hopefully also to battery cells one day. And then on the other side, we are, we are coming from the recycling side. We, are, we have activities in the application sector and also in the battery modules and battery packs. And and on like a national level, we find we have strengths, but uh, if if uh, like third parties evaluate how we are positioned, I think the situation looks pretty much the same. So we are well recognized globally. So this is a slide that where Bloomberg NEF uh, like ranked different nations in the lithium ion battery supply chain. And globally, we are number eight, nicely uh, ahead of Sweden. And then if we look at like the like the um, European list, so we are third just behind Germany and UK. So the position for us looks pretty, pretty good even now. And there's more activities going on all the time. And it's, it should not be a big surprise because it, as in these pictures you can see we have several mines and some of them are already providing battery materials for, for the industry and then we have also the refining and smelting facilities around the on different parts of the country. For example in Kokkola 10% of the uh, cobalt used globally is, is, is refined in Kokkola these days. And then if I move to the goals of the uh, defined in the in the strategy, first of all, we identified five must win battles. First of all, we want to have a competitive business environment that uh, attracts remarkable invest investments in the in the cluster. And we want to develop world world class research and competencies in chosen focus areas. And we want to grow the business, we want to grow export, and we want to be international and internationally competitive. And we want to take active role on the EU level. We want to 
influence the battery regulation and participate in the European battery ecosystem. We are doing all these things already, but I think these are like the areas where we would we should put more emphasis on. And then maybe, as I said before, we want to be, be a forerunner in responsible and sustainable battery production. And then we moved to defining the goals, and they are pretty much in line with the must win battles. So the, maybe the most important goal is that the, the Finnish battery and uh, electrification sector grows and re is able to renew itself. And then we are able to attract these investments in the whole sector and uh, to move to, to be able to move forward. We need cooperation and we need to work together side by side. So it's not only about industries, it's not only about academia, it's not only about, only about government or ministries. We must like work together and identify how to go forward. And uh, currently we have a pretty nice and pretty good reputation uh, globally. The Finnish battery and electrification ecosystem is well known but we still can build on that and make the, make us uh, to become an even better known brand. And responsibility is like a key element in everything we do. It's uh, it's providing the opportunities for growth and renewal, and it's also a key part of our, of our brand. And we want to keep and even strengthen our roles in, 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 in the current value chains and also take role in the emerging value chains. And the seventh uh, object, objective is digital, uh, digitalize, is in the field of digitalization. The digital solutions and data is becoming more and more relevant and important also in the field of in the field of batteries. So we, we will put emphasis on that as well. And then moving to actions. So the, we had several recommendations in the in the work, and we didn't like list what, which one would be like the most important and which one maybe the most challenging one. So we just like put a long list, and then the next step is to identify which one of them are, are considered as a, as easy to achieve or very extremely important to achieve and things like that. So there is still work to be done, but the areas of actions we identified, they are in in this list in seven seven fields in national cooperation, in skills, uh, in EU cooperation, investments, sustainability, brand building, and then funding. And maybe one of the most important next steps would be to, to create a national body to continue the work of the battery group or the battery strategy group. And in the skills area, uh, there is an idea of establishing an international doctoral school and maybe also starting a training for battery engineers in Finland. And in the EU cooperation, we must make sure that the Finnish experts and companies have access to EU level activities and take a key role there. And in, in investments, there is the debate going on related to permitting processes that they take so long. We must study and study the cases carefully, but also to try to make sure that we can go forward as, as fast as possible. And then the responsibility area, we are referring to carbon footprint and carbon handprint. And if we are able to demonstrate them, they can become even more remarkable competitive edges for us. And related to brand and communications, we had discussions that maybe there should be a side event in SLAS focusing on batteries that could attract a lot of attention to the Finnish battery ecosystem. And then regarding the funding, more money is needed and even the size of the funding should be bigger to get the investments here. But finally, the conclusions. I think the opportunity is unique right now. So the batteries have not ever been as important as they are now and will, be, will become in the next few years. 
and we are seeing the transformation from oil and combustion engines to EVs and batteries. And to make this happen, there's a huge amount of critical raw materials required. And Finland can have a big role in the, in the transformation, not only because of our raw material resources, but also uh, because of our ability to provide innovative solutions and 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 be active in the in the development of new technologies and we with good regulation and design in the battery materials we are able to also foster the circular economic growth and circularity of batteries and the final words final final words uh, the key findings could be summarized in three words it's skills its responsibility and its competitiveness and the uh, as as in the as i said in the starting i think we all are aware we all are aware that the valid battery value chain electrification are remarkable uh, steps to go forward if we want to reach the climate goals and um, it's important to make sure that batteries are seen as a solution not not as a problem and if we put emphasis on sustainability so i think that's the right way to go forward and uh, the strategy group identified the growth in batteries and electrification as one of the biggest opportunities for finland that there has been for for decades so we should not miss this and the goal of the strategy is so to weigh how to how to how to become a globally remarkable player and how this can become a remarkable a new industry for Finland and we have the firm belief that we are able to reach the goal but it became also clear that the industry is moving forward really rapidly so there is no time to waste. I think this was uh, like the highlights from the strategy work I wanted, wanted to, to mention this time but uh, I think there is time for, for questions now. Thank you. Uh, and thank you, Jyrki. Jyrki uh, maybe it's the Finnish shyness, but we don't see any any questions in the questions uh, or the chat box. So I take the opportunity to to ask one one. So, are there similar kind of uh, national strategies in uh, in uh, other European countries or or uh, Europe uh, or other otherwise where where the the battery uh, value chain is is uh, important, and if if so, what are the differences in the approach uh, when you compare it to to the Finnish uh, national uh, strategy? Thanks. That was a very good question. Uh, it would be nice to say that we are the first one globally to have a national strategy on batteries. It might not be exactly true, but uh, we are one of the first at least. Sweden. In Sweden, they they had a strategy work strategy process going on last year, and they came out with a, with a, with a strategy as well. But that is not in the same way a national strategy as what we we have done here in Finland. It's it was a strategy written by the industries and the research organizations. So it it does not have some same kind of a governmental backing as we here in Finland. And I, well, Jarko knows much better than uh, than me these these facts. But I think in Australia they have a strategy on batteries, and maybe in some other countries as well. And then, what is the difference in this? Uh, that's a good question. I think the understanding of of the bigger picture, this electrification aspect, is something that might be missing from from the other strategies, I guess. Thank you, Jyrki. A very good, good answer. Answer and and if Jarko are on the line, you can uh, put it in the in the chat box. If if you if you can uh, identify other other strategies around the world, world. Okay, thank you. And on with the show. Show the next uh, uh, speaker. I think uh, was also also in Salo about a year and a half ago. Go for the first kickoff of Mr. Matti Hietanen from the Min uh, Finnish Minerals Group, group 
Uh, Mr. Hirtanen is, is the CEO of Finnish Mineral Group and Vice Chairman of the Board of Terrafame Oy. Mr. Hirtanen is also a member of the Board of VTT Technical Research Center of Finland, which is one of the leading research and technology organizations in Europe. Prior to his career in metals and mining, Mr. Hirtanen worked as a civil servant in the Ministry of Economic Affairs, as well as in other ministries. And he will address the, his speech from a uh, point of uh, developing the Finnish uh, electric vehicle battery value chain. Matti, if you are ready, the stage is yours. Thank you. Thank you. And good morning. Hopefully you can hear me well and uh, also see the uh, presentation that I'm currently sharing. Um, just to confirm that uh, was it so that I have approximately 20 minutes for the, for the presentation. Yes, and a few questions after that. All right, <clears throat> great. So, so let's 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 go forward then. So, um, I will uh, firstly, uh, I will first uh, briefly uh, introduce uh, Finnish Minerals Group, that uh, who we are, and uh, and then 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 explain that how we are in 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 uh, uh, concrete actions taking the the. Uh, uh, creation of, of this value chain uh, forward. So um, Finnish Minerals Group or, or Suomen Malmialostus in Finnish is, is a special purpose uh, vehicle uh, owned by the state of Finland. And um, currently we, we have uh, three uh, mining assets in our portfolio. So first of all, we are the parent company of Terrafame and, and we form a group together with with, together with Terraforme, obviously. Um, uh, I'm sure that Terraforme is very well known for, for most of the uh, most, mo most of the uh, uh, people involved here. So, so uh, I won't go into details there, but uh, just to just to uh, uh, recap that Terraforme is now currently uh, uh, finalizing the, the construction of uh, of a battery chemicals plant. So. Uh, in the course of this spring, uh, Terraforma will, will uh, start the ramp up of, uh, of uh, nickel sulfate and copper sulfate uh, production, and uh, and and uh, for the for the especially for the nickel sulfate production, this facility will be will be extremely large. Uh, and my understanding is that it, it is actually the largest nickel nickel uh, sulfate facility in the in the world currently. Uh, we are also the uh, largest uh, shareholder in Caliper. That is, um, uh, that is not a uh, not yet a, uh, operational mining company, but a development project well well advanced though. And uh, and then Caliper uh, aims to aims to uh, produce uh, lithium hydroxide both from its uh, own uh, reserves, uh, but also potentially from from uh, external external. Uh, 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 concentrates, purchased con concentrates as, as well. And then, then thirdly, we, we are the sole owner of uh, Sokli OY, which is, uh, which is uh, our new, uh, newest uh, uh, asset, asset uh, which we purchased from Yara uh, last, last December. And uh, as, as you surely know, Sokli is a, a large uh, phosphate uh, project in, in uh, Savukoski municipality, and uh, and and now we are uh, currently currently planning that how we will take that that project forward. Uh, Sokli also basically basically relates to this uh, battery value chain because phosphate is also used in lithium-ion batteries in in in, in, in certain techno technologies, and um, and and also uh, and Sokli Sokli ore body also contains uh, rare earth elements, which are obviously also crucial for for uh, EVs. Then the fourth company uh, in this slide is uh, Finnish Battery Chemicals, which is our internal internal uh, development company uh, through which we, we in, in practice uh, 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 operate uh, uh, some of these uh, uh, preparations that we are currently currently having and taking taking forward. The 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 idea behind Finnish Minerals Group is to is to maximize the value of uh, Finnish minerals and and to do it in a responsible way. That basically basically have uh, has uh, two dimensions. So first of all, uh, the intention is to to um, to develop the state ownership within the uh, mining industry, 
and uh, and and um, help the uh, mining industry to to uh, uh, develop itself and uh, and and um, and and um, uh, uh, broaden its uh, activities within within Finland. Uh, and then secondly, also to to uh, increase the value add from the from the mining industry, which basically today means the facilitation of this battery battery value chain, because that is that is obviously obviously a topical topical uh, uh, question when we when we talk about uh, minerals and especially these these minerals that we we uh, have in our our uh, portfolio. Um, Sustainability, responsibility is is in the core of our mission. We 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 want to be a forerunner uh, in uh, responsibility related teams, and uh, especially uh, in the in the EV market and EV EV battery value chain, uh, sustainability is extremely important because the whole whole concept is to is to mitigate the climate change. And obviously, when people go to the uh, Go to a car car dealer. They want to be uh, sure that they are making wise decisions, and they want to they want to know that uh, that that uh, the the vehicles they are they are uh, buying and using uh, have the lowest possible uh, CO2 footprint, for example. And uh, this is obviously something that we are taking extremely seriously, and um, and and uh, also also uh, uh, kind of like um, using as our uh, competitive uh, advantage. Um, what 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 kind of like separates us from other uh, state-owned uh, holding companies is that we are we are also a development company and we we also have our own technological competencies. So so we are we are also actively taking uh, uh, technology projects forward. Uh, Originally, we were focused on water treatment technologies, but uh, nowadays the the scope of our technology activities is is broader, and uh, and and uh, especially, for example, traceability is is nowadays in the in the core core and uh, and then focus of our technology uh, development uh, uh, projects. And uh, what what that means in practice is that uh, that that once traceability is is really uh, Really uh, uh, commonly commonly uh, uh, achieved, and uh, for example, battery passports or other type of uh, arrangements are, are in use. Then, uh, then basically, the the, the end customer uh, can can uh, know and be be sure that uh, from where the the raw materials um, COE is is uh, is having in in the uh, vehicle used. Uh, but from where those raw materials are originating, and uh, and then what kind of like, um, 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 for example, CO2 footprint uh, these these raw, raw materials are, are are having, and this is obviously, like I said, this is obviously something that we we very clearly see that benefits uh, Finland and uh, and our our uh, pursuit to to attract uh, additional investments into into Finland. But then, if if going forward to the uh, actual actual uh, topic and the, the battery value chain uh, development, so uh, the, here are a couple of slides which which might be a little bit uh, outdated already, but uh, but but um, still the still the uh, message is the same. But perhaps uh, latest latest uh, uh, pictures or, or uh, tables would be even even more. More uh, um, uh, aggressive with the with the with the growth uh, forecast, but basically, the, as as we all all here know, the the message is that um, that that uh, EV market is 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 growing, growing uh, uh, rapidly, and uh, especially especially in in Europe. So so this is obviously obviously now now uh, kind of like a. Uh, uh, um, situation where where uh, everyone needs to be be fast and in order to secure their position within the within this 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 new new uh, market and uh, and new new value chains that are be, that are being uh, uh, built up and uh, um, this is also also perhaps a little bit outdated picture picture I'm sure that uh, that that this this numbers could be even even higher today. Today, but uh, but but uh, let's say so that the the uh, conservative uh, 
consensus is that uh, at the end of this decade, decade uh, European uh, automotive industry will will need uh, at least 400 gigawatt hours of uh, battery cells annually, uh, and uh, and then um, uh, at the same time, uh, if we look the 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 uh, uh, cumulative amount of uh, different uh, cell projects uh, that have been uh, announced, we can see that we are actually actually quite quite uh, well in line with those uh, uh, demand uh, assumptions or forecasts that we are we are having. So it seems that uh, if all of these pro uh, cell projects uh, go forward, that uh, that that Europe uh, will will uh, uh, have a, a pretty pretty nice number of um, cell cell production for its. Um, for its uh, needs uh, at least uh, within within next uh, five to ten, ten years. Uh, at the same time, uh, it also also seems to be so that uh, these uh, growth expectations are, are increasing month by month, and uh, and and uh, this this change that we are now witnessing may may even be more more aggressive that we we have been uh, uh, um, forecasting uh, so far. But if if we then take this uh, this this um, if we, if we then take a look look to the value chain uh, for uh, like backwards from the cell production, and if we use this 400 gigawatt uh, hours of cells as a as a starting point, we can we can translate that into a, into a, a cathode active materials uh, uh, production demand and precursors uh, production uh, demand and and so forth and see that uh, that that uh, for example. Uh, uh, when we talk about uh, cathode active materials or, or precursors, that approximately 600,000 tons of, of uh, annual production in, in Europe will be will be needed, and uh, this this obviously uh, is an interesting uh, interesting um, uh, uh, picture because because currently, for example, uh, in, in the in the cathode active material production, there, there is no no uh, uh, production in Europe at all. There are certain certain projects uh, uh, in in uh, Germany and Poland that are now now uh, going forward, but uh, but but uh, but the growth growth is starting from zero, and the same applies to precursor pretty much to the uh, precursor production as as well. So so this is uh, clearly an an area uh, or or spot in the uh, value chain that is uh, becoming a bottleneck for the cell production in 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 uh, Europe. And obviously, the same applies uh, to a large extent to, to uh, battery chemicals production as well. Uh, I just uh, said that uh, Terraforma will be the largest uh, nickel sulfate producer, uh, and, uh, and then its uh, nameplate capacity is 170,000 tons of uh, nickel sulfate. And as we can see from this picture, the, the European demand will be almost, almost uh, 10 times higher. So, so plenty of additional capacity in, in Europe will be needed, or uh, plenty of uh, of uh, import from from uh, from elsewhere. So, very very uh, robust uh, growth uh, numbers uh, uh, expected here. Then we will look our our uh, offering as a, as a as a country, and I'm sure that this is this is something that uh, Europe already basically basically. Uh, uh, illustrated so so our uh, clear strength is that we have all the all the uh, key uh, raw materials uh, cobalt nickel and uh, lithium and especially cobalt and nickel are, are extremely important here uh, because of the the, the, the the kind of like um, uh, tightness of the of the um, supply so this is a good uh, starting point and uh, and then extremely extremely uh, beneficial for us. But uh, I would also like to say that uh, that that uh, the 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 fact that we have these raw materials available here is not alone sufficient for any additional additional uh, investments uh, the value chain because because obviously these these raw materials are, are valuable and uh, and and. Uh, uh, and then they can be uh, shipped uh, also uh, else, elsewhere for for uh, further further uh, refining. So so the same logic, for example, that seems to apply to to paper and pulp industry. That uh, that that pulp 
alpha mills need to be located quite close to the uh, 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 raw materials uh, doesn't as such uh, uh, apply to the to, to this this value chain because of the uh, because of the fact that uh, that that uh, these these raw materials can be can be shipped uh, elsewhere for for further further refining as, as well. Uh, but that is a good starting point uh, still, and uh, and then if we also also uh, um, also kind of like a give uh, emphasis to the fact that um, that that uh, Finland is one of the one of the one of the countries in 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 Europe that can offer uh, 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 like a credibly uh, offer offer uh, a green green uh, CO two free uh, uh, energy electricity and also with uh, with uh, uh, reasonable uh, price that is that is obviously also something that is is benefiting us as uh, uh, and uh, perhaps um, perhaps the most important uh, uh, competitive advantage that we have here when we talk about uh, costs and uh, and then obviously uh, at the end of the day uh, costs are, are the uh, decisive uh, decisive argument when when companies are uh, uh, deciding that where in Europe they are they are uh, they are they are building their uh, future future plans and operations and then if I, if I then try to try to briefly summarize that what we are actually now now doing here and what is the what is the target so so I think that it is best done throughout through this picture so so this is the value chain and and then through Terraforma and Caliper we are already very well positioned uh, in this in this uh, gray area so so uh, we have um, uh, battery battery chemicals production covered uh, and uh, and then what we are now trying to do is uh, is to go forward in the value chain to to cut out materials production and eventually to sell production as as well uh, and obviously not forgetting the, the recycling and um, what this means in in practice now is that we are we are now uh, uh, focused on on uh, Cathode materials uh, investments because that is obviously the next step here in the in the value chain and as as I just uh, showed that is also the most let's say lucrative uh, place for uh, investments uh, currently because of the kind of like lack of uh, uh, lack of uh, uh, other other uh, pr projects uh, in 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 Europe and uh, and then uh, this cathode materials production uh, includes uh, two. Uh, production stages, precursor uh, production and cathode active materials production, and uh, and then we currently have uh, projects uh, focusing on both of these uh, both of these uh, production uh, stages uh, that we are taking taking forward. And our strategy is to go forward so that we are we are uh, in discussions with uh, with uh, partners who are already uh, in this industry who who know how to produce these. Uh, these materials who, ha who have all the, all the needed uh, knowledge and IP and, uh, and, and industrial expertise and uh, commercial expertise and, uh, and then instead of uh, investing somewhere else in, in Europe we are, we are uh, attracting them to, to, to invest into Finland together with us so that we can act as a, as a local, local uh, uh, partner uh, uh, in, the, in these investments and uh, and and uh, through that partnership uh, uh, reduce the, the kind of like a risk of, of risk of uh, uh, risks that are related to the investment and and also also uh, facilitating the, 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 the kind of like a timely preparation of, of the investment as, as well because we all, all, all understand that uh, that that time is time is extremely Crucial here because because obviously now everyone is uh, is uh, is kind of like securing their position within the within the uh, value chain and uh, and and uh, time time and delays are the are the worst uh, enemies here basically and just to just to tend to to kind of like uh, uh, summarize that how these uh, uh, preparations are going forward we as we have published we are we are having preparations on four different locations Kokkolavasa, Kotka and Hamina and uh, and and um, these preparations are uh, in, in in practice uh, basically basically going going forward through uh, environmental impact assessments which are now uh, 
uh, going going uh, strongly forward, uh, especially in Kotka and Hamina Hamina region. We actually uh, was last week when we filed the the uh, environmental impact uh, assessment report, and uh, and then uh, the 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 uh, response from the authority will be will be received after a few months, and after that this EIA process for Kotka and Hamina is is ready. And uh, and basically, what we are evaluating there is uh, is both PCAM and CAM production, so that uh, that that uh, in in Kotka both PCAM and CAM are assessed, and uh, and and then then um, Hamina Hamina includes uh, PCAM production only. And here is also just to show a map that how these uh, potential production sites are located located there and uh, and and uh, I'll leave you with a couple of slides uh, illustrating that how these plants in practice could could look like so here is the production facilities of of uh, of Hamina Hamina plant uh, beacon production the, the this this um, 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 plot which is uh, here in the in the uh, uh, lower side of the of the picture is is uh, stage one, uh, so so the first stage, and then this this uh, upper part of the of the picture is uh, uh, expansion uh, potential for later later stages, and uh, and and then this is Kotka Kotka uh, plant uh, layout of it, uh, uh, including both PCAM and CAM CAM production. So this is the kind of like a brief uh, summary that uh, that that uh, what this um, value chain looks uh, like from our perspective currently and how we are in, in concrete actions going forward there thank you matti we have a few questions on the chat box uh, the first one is coming from uh, heikki saari luoma at the turku university of applied sciences uh, how likely is it that construction of a battery cell plant will start in Finland by 2025? And is it one of the uh, mineral group group's uh, main goals? Uh, well, yes, like I said, we are, we are, and if I go back to this, this picture here, so, so out, 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 our uh, target is to, to have a battery cell production is in, in Finland as, as well. But like I said, we are now now focusing on these uh, gathered materials uh, projects uh, because that is obviously the, the kind of like a logical next step in the in the value chain. And like I said, that is also also the area where the the, the uh, next bottleneck is. So so that is that is the, the the area in the in the value chain where where we have the best uh, possibilities to go forward right now. Uh, but it doesn't mean that we are we are kind of like um, uh, saying no to sell sell uh, uh, sell investments. We have uh, activities uh, also also uh, also there, and uh, and then we are we are in in preparations and discussions relating to cell production as well. But uh, but but this is the kind of like a marching order that we have here. That uh, this is this is now the focus area. This uh, cathode materials production. Thank you, Matti. We have another question here is that um, what are your or FMG's plans for the battery recycling? For example, using the secondary raw materials from the recycled batteries in the production of battery chemicals. Yeah, well, um, I would say so that we we uh, we obviously see that uh, recycling is an uh, essential part of this whole value chain and basically the 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 uh, logic here needs to be such that uh, that that uh, uh, or, or the target that uh, that basically every every uh, uh, nickel or cobalt or lithium units that are being uh, excavated uh, uh, in, uh, from the mines that, uh, that that once they go through this value chain they are recycled back as a, as a secondary uh, raw materials obviously there will be loss, loss losses in in the yield in in all the production stages, but that obviously needs to be the, the, the target and, uh, and, and logic. Uh, recycling uh, has many, many meanings here. If we talk, the, if we, if we talk about the, the kind of like uh, concrete uh, 
recycling of uh, used batteries. That is obviously something that, for example, Fortum is very, very actively taking, taking forward. And uh, we will see in future that uh, how much like additional, additional uh, uh, push from from uh, from us is is uh, potentially needed there. But uh, but uh, it seems that that, that part is is uh, is going forward also also uh, very actively by by Fortum, for example. But then then uh, recycling obviously contains many 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 other uh, uh, topics here as well. So so the recycling of off spec materials is obviously obviously uh, so something that needs to be taken taken into account in each of the production stages, and also the the kind of like use of different uh, side streams, uh, being for example uh, some waste materials or uh, or or. Uh, or, or other 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 uh, valuable valuable uh, um, uh, streams that are that are uh, perhaps uh, nowadays uh, discharged to to, to the uh, other bodies, for example. And we we are obviously also also uh, making preparations to take uh, take uh, use of those side streams as well. So uh, this is perhaps a little bit complicated answer, but uh, but 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 the main point is that uh, we we obviously also try to find the, the kind of like the right focus areas within the recycling where we are uh, needed. So if, if, the, if the activities are, are uh, emerging without our uh, facilitation, then perhaps uh, there is no, no need for us to, to be active there. But, uh, but uh, we, we, this is something that we need to, need to uh, follow, follow actively and we are following actively and, uh, and, and uh, we are, we are uh, assessing that what is the what is the uh, right right uh, uh, right focus area for us uh, within the recycling? Thank you, Matti. And one more question, and I'm hoping that we will we will get uh, answers to the uh, rest of the questions in the chat box uh, later during this uh, this uh, event, or we will follow with uh, another other. Uh, messages to to all of the participants after after these uh, sessions one more question for matti is that um, uh, the part of the value stream the downstream uh, applications uh, what kind of a new partnerships are needed maybe a couple of a concrete examples of that part of the value chain well when we talk about downstream applications uh, uh, that is that is uh, perhaps the, the clearly the only only kind of like area that is uh, outside of our scope of operations uh, but uh, obviously it is beneficial if uh, beneficial for us and for the, for the for this whole like a Finnish battery battery uh, industry or battery value chain that uh, that, that if, if there is a, if there is a, like a strong local uh, domestic, domestic uh, demand for for battery cells that obviously helps to to build this this uh, value chain in in, in finland uh, but then when we are talking about big masses and mass scale production then then obviously uh, in, in 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 reality the the largest market will be in in uh, in uh, central europe but what I see extremely uh, interesting here is, 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 is the opportunity to find different type of like kind of like a niche markets or and a niche uh, applications where where uh, like um, uh, special types of cells uh, can be used and are, are needed because because that can offer uh, very very uh, uh, interesting and attractive opportunities for for uh, Finnish companies and even for for the cell production to find this this type of like a special usages uh, where even uh, even even the kind of like a, not only the profit can be higher but and margins margins can be higher but also the uh, the the uh, requirements from the uh, production and from the technologies uh, can also be uh, higher than in mass scale production and uh, and then hence uh, something that uh, that that uh, Finland can perhaps uh, uh, be be even more cost cost competitive and uh, and then otherwise competitive than in this 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 uh, traditional cell cell production okay thank you matti uh, very good uh, questions uh, still in the chat box but we need to move on with the with the show now we are having uh, maybe 2 minute uh, break 
break in the so to you can fill fill up your coffee cups and 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 uh, be prepared for the second session of the of, of the uh, event event uh, this uh, uh, event will be recorded and there will be a stream available uh, later words it need to be edited but uh, in the chat box you will see the place where you can find it uh, find it later now a couple of minutes time time break for for filling up the co coffee cups. Yeah, we start 10:02 sharp. <laughs> <laughs>